On this week's boiler tip, we're gonna talk about issues with consistency of pressure on the deaerator. Um, we're typically trying to hold five to seven PSI on it, um, but sometimes we don't. And if we don't, we're short-circuiting the deaerating process. Um, one cause we will have with maintaining pressure on the deaerator can be an issue with our pressure reducing valve. Um, if we've got a PRV on our DA, we have to keep in mind that that was sized for a certain inlet pressure at a certain volume. So if we start making up a lot more water uh, because we're dumping condensate um, than the DA was designed for, we may not sustain the pressure on the DA when fresh water's coming in. And, and that's an issue. So we want to watch that pressure at varying feed rates to the deaerator. Um, if we see that inlet pressure dropping or going to zero when we're making up water, the issue is as that water's spraying in, there's no steam to heat it. So if we shot this with a temperature gun, what we'll often see in that scenario is that the bottom of the deaerator stays cold and the surface or a few inches will be warm. And what that can indicate is that we're not keeping up with the steam. Um, and if we're not, we're not deaerating that water as it comes in. It's all well and good to have pressure on the DA when we're not making up water, but we really need it when we are making up water. So we can monitor that. Um, in some cases, um, simply tuning the loop control, if we've got a loop control for the DA, so it proportions over a wider range is going to function a lot better. Um, if you've got a deaerator with on-off feed water, um, that pressure's got to be sustained. Um, generally, um, deaerators come with modulating feed water controls. And the reason is it gives us a wider range and more opportunity for the PRV to keep up with the incoming water. But if it's not, we've got a problem. Um, we could have an issue with a plugged pilot line or other maintenance issues with the PRV, or it could be simply that, hey, we added a bigger feed water valve because we weren't keeping up. If, if you do that, and we don't also increase the size of the PRV, they're not matched anymore. So we can't keep the right steam flow going in for the amount of water we're putting in. Um, but we have to be careful as well, if we increase the size of a PRV to fix that, um, the safety relief valve on the DA has to be increased as well because the sizing of the safety relief valve on the DA is to vent the full capacity of the PRV. So if that PRV malfunctions, we don't overpressure the tank. So I've seen where they've throttled the feed water to limit the maximum flow, but that kind of, uh, that's an invitation for somebody to say, hey, why is this closed partly? Um, and then they open it the rest of the way. So we're better off looking at the root cause. Do we have too large of a valve? Are we not modulating that valve appropriately? I mean, on a deaerator, we can, we can vary that level a few inches. It's not like a boiler where we wanna keep it within a half inch. So if we modulate the water more proportionally, we've got a better chance of it keeping up, the steam keeping up with it. Those sudden steam pressure drops also cause an entirely additional problem. And that is, if we do have a deaerator at boiling temperature essentially, when that pressure drops on the deaerator, we can actually have flash steam occurring throughout the water in the deaerator. So that can result in pump cavitation. So stable pressure on the deaerator is key for operation.